look at restoration of a class 5 cavity. So as usual the first thing we'll always do is to isolate the tooth. You can use matrix bands such as these and you can also use a wedge to separate the tooth. Although it's not absolutely necessary in this case, in this case we're basically using to just secure our matrix band. Start with your bonding agent and then use an air water syringe to thin out the layer of the bonding agent. You don't want it to be pooling everywhere. And then go ahead and cure this. Once you've cured it, take some more composite in a plastic instrument and place it within the cavity that we have here and slowly condense it so that you're completely filling the cavity and remove excess flash on tooth structure. And as you know, composite only cures in layers so make sure that you're curing each layer. This cavity is not very big, um, but ensure that you don't have any composite going into the gingiva, especially in a typodont, um, because you usually have some space between the tooth and the gingiva. Use an explorer to just run around the tooth and remove that excess flush. Your restoration should be flush with the tooth structure and the cable surface margins. After we've cured the first layer, we'll go ahead and add some more composite on top of this. This could be our last layer and condense it flush with the cable surface margins. When you're placing it, make sure that you place very little composite and not a lot at one time so that you're not left with finishing a lot of composite. It's always best to remove excess composite when it's in its moldable fluid state rather than after curing it.
Once you ensure complete fill of the cavity, now we can move on to using our burr. Um, you can use a 329 or a 330 carbide or any carbide burr um, for that matter. Over here, we're using a 330 carbide in a slow speed. And we're starting to remove the excess composite that has flowed over the tooth structure. In this case, we do have some more, more excessive composite than what is desired. However, it's always good to have some excess that you can remove um, at the end. Not a lot flowing around, but this ensures that you don't have any voids or gaps at the KO surface margin where the tooth structure meets your restoration. As you can see, we're using it in a slow speed and we're being really gentle to make sure that we're not, you know, and when you're running the burr, as you can see, we're moving it constantly from restoration to tooth structure, tooth structure to restoration, and we're not just using it in the restoration because if you use the burr only in the restoration area, you might create some ditching or you might create, a, you know, something, a transition that is not smooth with your tooth structure. And as you're doing this, also use an explorer to continuously run along the restoration and the tooth structure to look for flash. And as you find flash, you can come back to your burr and use it to remove this excess flash. Make sure that you have a really smooth end result. Once we've done gross removal of all our excess material, you can now switch to a finishing diamond. Um, or if you're comfortable just using a carbide, you can do that too. Now we're using a finishing diamond burr um, on, in a slow speed and slowly smoothing out this restoration, always ensuring that we are running our burr from the restoration to the tooth structure and not just using it where the restoration is. This is gonna help us to remove some more excess flash and also smoothen out our restoration so that it's nice and follows the contour of our tooth. As you can see, our restoration is convex, following the facial contour of this tooth and it's not just flat. And then you can switch to our favorite burr which we use for composite restorations are white stone or finishing point and use that to further refine our restoration. And here's our final result. We've taken off all that excess material. It's really flush and beautiful to look at.